You know when something is so incredibly perfect you literally have no notes? There is not a single note, not even a musical note, nothing. This is just perfect. I don't remember when I first heard about it, but when I did, I was like, Mommy want that. No! God, please, no! No! Welcome back to Torn Apart. Today we're talking about something that I've been wanting to talk since probably at least the release of the first few trailers when it comes to House of the Dragon, so a couple of months ago, but also the release of the first few pictures. I remember talking about it like in my most anticipated movies and TV shows of last year video, The Last of Us TV show. It's finally here, it's on HBO Max. I watched it as soon as I woke up this morning and I actually got emotional. I was not expecting that. But I wanted to experience it as fast as possible, mostly because I've seen so many incredible reviews for this show. So many people giving it praise, but also calling it the best video game adaptation ever in the history of pop culture. Which people were claiming that finally the video game curse was lifted off. Even though we kind of have a good examples of other films and TV shows which have done a decent job. Maybe not a perfect job, but a decent job. <laughs> EMOTIONAL DAMN IT! When I first heard that they were working on an HBO series of Last of Us, I was a bit skeptical, mostly because Last of Us is literally one of the most cinematic games I've ever seen. Uncharted is that, of course, as well. And I'm talking about Uncharted mostly because Neil Druckmann was the main writer since the very beginning, but he was the creative director only of the fourth one. And you can really tell that. The fourth one is actually one of the best Uncharted games ever. You ever wonder, like, different choices, how we might have ended up? No, I like the hand we've been dealt. But besides that, what I wanted to say is that Neil Druckmann really has a very specific style of writing and his games tend to be incredibly cinematic and it really feels like you're living through a movie. It doesn't really feel like a video game, it feels like something entirely different. In fact, a couple of years ago I actually put Last of Us 2 as an honorable mention for the best movies of the year just because it just impacted me so much. And I even have Ellie's tattoo right here, I mean it's technically a spoiler if you haven't played the game but it's okay don't worry about it. it's not that important at the end of the day I love Last of Us so of course I'm gonna be critical I'm gonna be analyzing every single frame I'm gonna tell you is it worth it is it actually as good as people say let's find out you trust me Let's do a little bit of an introduction when it comes to the background of the series and then we'll go into a deep analysis of the first episode. And I will do the thing that I do with all the other Marvel series as well. I wanna try to do some speculations. I wanna try and see whether this series is gonna be good just by analyzing everything that they gave us with this first episode. Well, first of all, this series is created by Craig Mazin and of course, Neil Druckmann himself. Craig Mazin is a bit of a weird guy. He's got a bit of a weird pedigree when you think about it because he's the writer of incredibly acclaimed things like Scary Movie 3, Scary Movie 4, The Hangover Part 2, The Hangover Part 3, The Huntsman Winter's War and apparently is working as a writer also on the new adaptation of Borderlands and on the next Pirates of the Caribbean movie. You would never expect someone like that to be in charge as a creative director for something so serious as Last of Us. But there is one credit that I have to mention and that explains everything. Everything. He's the creative director of 2019 HBO series Chernobyl. What happened after? Full of it. Madness. Which was such an incredible surprise back then. I'm not a really huge fan of like biopic dramas just in general. TV series even worse. Like I can barely stomach two hour long biopics. So can you imagine a biopic that lasts more than that? But it was so incredibly well directed. It was so beautiful as well. I had no idea that you could tell a story that you feel like you know and that everybody knows so well. It makes you understand why they decided to choose him as a creative director for this series. And of course, 
already we can see it from the very start of the episode where we get like an interview in the 60s of a couple of scientists and a journalist who are discussing pandemics of course and specifically what are the threats to human health talking about bacteria but also talking about fungi there are no treatments for this no preventatives no cures they don't exist it's not even possible to make them so if that happens we lose the thing is, the cordyceps fungi has been discussed like in popular culture even before Last of Us. There is also another book which is called The Girl with All the Gifts, which is basically up until now the best adaptation of The Last of Us kind of mood. But just saying that it is the same kind of feeling, it is the same kind of special effects and the same kind of zombies as well. So we've been discussing cordyceps fungi for quite a while and I really like the idea of starting this year with something incredibly grounded like this and this is what Mason is really good at. Neil Druckmann is really known for his complex character relationships, he's not really known for complex stories and when I say complex stories I'm talking about incredibly weird plot twists, things that you might see in like a glass onion movie or any kind of mystery movie in general. You get a very straightforward story and complex characters, that's what he's interested in. So of course don't go into The Last of Us expecting it to be like something like House of the Dragon for example because because that's not it but it will definitely feel different to most of the other zombie outbreak post-apocalyptic series because of the characters because there are so many interesting characters and they feel really real but i would very much like for you to hurt him so let's go hunt that motherfucker down and get our battery and our truck and then we'll go find tommy all right the relationships feel real, even the most secondary characters, even the most side characters you could imagine, they all have motivation and backstories and that's the kind of thing that I really like and of course reminds me of George R. R. Martin writing for example. That's something that he really likes to do as well to give you those really tiny details that makes you feel like a person is real. Neil Druckmann does that as well and you can feel it in the first episode as well. There are so many characters, they're just appearing on screen for a couple of seconds but you immediately know who they are, what they they want in life and what their role is within a specific scene. There is for example like one of the military guys who is smuggling things with the help of Joel and you understand where he's coming from, you understand everything about him just by that scene and then seeing him again a couple of minutes later towards the end of the episodes, you feel for that guy. Really man? Yep, we're doing this by the book. Jesus Christ. Alright, what about three quarters? Unauthorized exit. I'll hang you for that. You don't just see him as a bad guy, as like a puppet for the villains of the story themselves. No, it feels like a real person and that's the strength of this series here and they're already doing that just with the first episode. You will often see similarities with other characters that you've seen in comic books like Preacher or Why the Last Man. Those are two comic books that Neil Druckmann cites quite a lot when it comes to his style, the things that he's interested in. So if you like those as well, you probably like Last of Us at the end of the day. From the first episode we can already have a glimpse of the special effects and the budget that is being used to make this series work and it works. Honestly, like even the big set pieces where you get those extreme long shots of a city being destroyed or even when you look at the first few minutes of the story where we're going through a city where there is just madness going around and people running and explosions going in the background everything feels really good it looks good it looks realistic and it doesn't really look like a concept art that could have been stolen from the video game it really feels like they were trying to work on them in a different way so that they would feel like the video game itself of course so if you've played the game you recognize definitely a lot of elements but at the same time they're not just doing a copy and paste adaptation something that they try to do quite often when it comes to video game adaptation and it just doesn't work because the video game is a medium that is very different from a film from a TV series, there's a lot of things that you can't copy and paste from them. This is considered to be one of the most expensive Canadian shows ever made and I've seen numbers online saying that every episode costs approximately between 10 and 15 million dollars, which is insane of course, but the thing that really reassured me is that this looks even better than House of the Dragon. I have no idea why, maybe House of the Dragon the first season was slightly rushed to be able to compete with Rings of Power, but some of the extreme 
extreme long shots and the kind of like when they were trying to give you context of a city or context of like a dragon landing and interacting for example with normal human being it just looked a bit empty looked a bit off there is nothing that feels off when it comes to this first episode everything looks perfect and the concept art slash the special effects when it comes to creating the feel of being in a post-apocalyptic world they work it feels fresh as well it doesn't feel like other things that we've seen maybe if you've played games like days gone you might recognize that kind of style when it comes to adding like a lot of greenery coming out of bricks coming out of different buildings and it kind of feels like the urban environments are mutating as well and going back to something that feels more like nature and that goes really well with the themes of the cordyceps fungus and the idea of almost planet earth reclaiming everything so humans but also the landscapes themselves and we ended the episode also on a really incredible beautiful shot with sound effects of the clickers in the background so it is definitely pointing to much better things that we're gonna be seeing in the next few episodes anyways I'm, I'm going back and forth in between the things that happened in the first episode mostly because I don't want to give you too many spoilers if you still haven't had the time to see it but also because I don't like those kind of videos that go plot point by plot point and it feels like you're just reading like a Wikipedia I actually want this video to be a little bit more fluid you know and I hope you appreciate that so the series consists of nine episodes and Gustavo Santolalla is back to compose the music in fact we can hear him already with the theme music of Last of Us. I'm not sure whether he changed it slightly or he fine-tuned it to feel a little bit different. For me it felt exactly the same as the one you would hear in Last of Us, so the video game itself. And I did like the introduction that we get when it comes to all the fungi vibes slowly mutating and kind of like taking hold of everything. But at the same time, it kind of feels like we're in that kind of trend that we've also seen with Netflix 1899 title sequence where there is just a shit ton of CGI. And they did the same thing with House of the Dragon when you think about it. It's just a lot of special effects going through all of these incredibly fake looking environments. It was okay. It's probably like the only thing I can criticize about this episode is that the title sequence was okay just following the trend of computer animated things and just it doesn't feel as real it doesn't feel as grounded and I feel like it doesn't really work for a series like this the thing that you should know maybe if you haven't played the game last of us is that the very first act of the game is not actually that interesting I mean there is a really important thing happening there a really important event that happens right when the apocalypse is happening basically where we are introduced to the main characters their relationships but also to the madness and what is doing to humanity itself but then after that so the moment before we actually go on our quest on our journey there is not that much happening at the end of the day so it is normal that you find maybe this first episode a bit slow or maybe even a bit uneventful even though it is throwing at us a lot of like world building we're talking about the fireflies we're introduced to Tess we're introduced to Joe we're introduced to Ellie as well actually the beginning we're introduced to her through like a fake name so Veronica so at the beginning maybe you don't really know who she is so they are trying actually to play with your expectations there we are introduced to the fight in between the fireflies and the military of course but we're also introduced to the idea of how much this is a dictatorship and they're not taking any risks there is curfews going on by the way I forgot to say maybe spoiler alert for the first episode I'm gonna be analyzing right now like a lot of important aspects and things that could be considered as plot twists so be careful with that this is gonna be for the people who have seen the series there is a really powerful scene where there is this child who is going to the city who thinks he's finally found like a safe haven and just because they see like a little tiny scratch on his knee they decide to get rid of him Emotional talent! We don't really see the action of the military actually killing him, but we do see Joe disposing of his body that we recognize because of the shoes and putting him into a fire. It really shows how brutal this universe is and how people are just not taking any chances anymore. And I really like that they try to do a little bit of character development in the first act of the first episode as well, showing that Joe is in survival mode since the very beginning of the outbreak. There is this moment where they're running 
running away with their car there's been a car accident you see a family with a child of course Sarah wants to stop to save them but Joel urges Tommy not to do that and to just keep going so he's already making really brutal choices from the beginning so it really shows how it's not that he's been like that since the beginning it's not that the outbreak changed him it's that he's always been a survivor he's always been that kind of person it's just that the outbreak and the apocalypse kind of intensified those feelings by a hundred and of course losing Sarah as well I feel like we have to address that right because it's one of the most incredible moments like in video game history I feel like it's not like an understatement to say that but what I liked about it is that they try to do a little bit more of story development they try to make us feel who Sarah was a little bit more so we get to spend the entire day with them and of course we get to see like the outbreak slowly starting we see a couple of characters like having little you know twitches with their arms there is a moment for example when she's at school and we see like a child like twitching like that and we know what it means but probably she doesn't and she doesn't care it, it could be just someone who has a very weird like nervous tick it doesn't really matter and the same happens when she goes to her neighbor's house and you see in the blurry background like the old character sort of like having spasms and having those kind of weird muscle twitches so you know that things are getting worse and they're not seeing it they don't see it coming so it really pays off even more because of that when the outbreak actually starts but I liked all of those tiny moments I like the tiny moment of her going to a shop and getting the watch repaired because it gives it even more meaning I feel like in the video game there's a lot of things that are sort of like introduced at the beginning of the game but we get to explore them and understand like the emotional resonance of them only when Joel decides to open up and tell his story to Ellie for example not her you know what Maria told me about Sarah Ellie and you are treading on some mighty thin ice here. I'm sorry about your daughter, Joel, but I have lost people too. You have no idea what loss is. Well, here we actually get to experience it for ourselves much, much earlier. And I think it's a good thing that they did here. It's a bit of a change when it comes to the video game, but they had to do that mostly because when you're playing a video game, it's really intense. So you tend to spend a lot of time on it. You could, for example, play for five or six hours and you don't even realize that you've gotten in a lot of information when it comes to the characters, their relationship and their backstories as well. But you can't do the same things when it comes to films and TV shows. You have an hour, an hour 20, 50 minutes, minutes sometimes max and you need to put those kind of hints of character development those hints of backstories way earlier otherwise the audience is gonna feel that you're just keeping all that information for yourself and they can't really relate to the main characters when Ellie watches him beating a man to death she is activated earlier in the episode when Sarah sees him killing this old woman who's infected who he has to kill he killed her she cries hey, baby I'm sorry Ellie doesn't cry Ellie likes it especially because they're not really plot twists they're just things that the main characters decides not to discuss openly because it hurts them too much to discuss it right the moment where actually Sarah dies and gets shot by one of the military guys it was really really powerful it really worked on me I was actually crying as I said like at the beginning of this video they really managed to make us attached to Sarah in just like a couple of minutes and it's incredible but if we go a little bit back with the outbreak itself I love the way that they show Shot it like basically like in the video game where we got the camera in the car and things rushing from the sides from the front from the back and our view being limited by that as well there is a lot of handheld camera work as well in this first episode and you can feel why they decided to use that it really works it's really beautiful and you can feel the rush you know you can feel the adrenaline in the air and even though it felt like almost a copy of the give video game sequence when it comes to the car chase it still worked quite well especially because of all the planes flying through and all the sound effects that we're working on as well as a writer you're trying to construct a scenario where like a person is trying to avoid a fate worse than death for Joel it'd be losing a daughter again and he probably would not survive that so then how do we put him in a situation where now he has to be with this girl and he immediately tries to reject it you're gonna do it 
Oh, we, are. we don't have time for this. And I like the idea of this coming out just after like the pandemic itself because there is a lot of things that remind you of that as well. For example, there is a little bit of discussions at the beginning of the episode about you see a lot of police cars going around, you see firefighters, you see people struggling in other countries like they talk about Indonesia, for example, they talk about Jakarta, but people don't take it seriously. Of course, you don't take it seriously because we're so used to violence being so common we're so used to terrorist attacks, we're so used to bad things happening in other places they are so far away from us as well, so we just don't take it seriously. And also like if you live in a town for example where there are a lot of like strikes, you are used also to seeing everyday struggles like that in between normal people and the police. So of course you never could imagine that it would turn into like a global pandemic, into like a, an apocalypse itself. So I feel like just because they grounded it like that and they gave it that kind of context, it makes sense and you understand even more how all of those things could happen because it happened to us literally like a couple of years ago. So this is probably why I think The Last of Us is gonna be like a huge, huge hit probably be like the best thing that comes out of the pandemic itself and I also like the pacing of the episode itself there is a lot of movement we go from one scene to the next we don't really stay too long with everything for example there is this scene where basically Ellie gets to meet Joel they're trying to retrieve a battery for example and all the fireflies in that particular building have been killed by a contraband gang and it could have been incredibly easy to just stop the episode there on a cliffhanger maybe they could have just heard for example shots and stuff like that and they could have hidden or maybe they could have participated in the fight as well and then they could have ended the episode on a cliffhanger of them finding Ellie but no they're not trying to stretch things out and I like that this is something that I did in Rings of Power and then made a lot of people mad they tried to stretch things so much to the point that it didn't even feel like the series was advancing and at the end of the day it destroyed the climax as well and it gave it less meaning here no we're advancing it really feels like it's being shot and dealt with like a documentary it really feels like we are in the action itself and we have to keep going keep going keep going because otherwise the outbreak is gonna catch up to us and kill us it's really funny because these are basically fast zombies that we're dealing with within the last of us universe so it makes sense that everything goes faster this is not gonna be like the walking dead so don't expect it to get really slow in the next few episodes it's always gonna be in a rush we're gonna go from place to place seeing new different landscapes and meeting other survivors and meeting a lot of really bad people as well. Fuck you, man. I told you what you wanted. I ain't telling you shit. That's all right. I believe it. No, wait. You disgust me. Go on. I've heard that they're gonna be changing one thing from the video game and I'm still not sure whether it's gonna look interesting or not. They're not apparently including the spores. Apparently the Cordyceps virus doesn't spread through spores but just through the scratches and bites of the zombies themselves. I'm not sure whether that's interesting mostly because there are so many incredible scenes where they're wearing you know the gas masks and they're going through an infected zone with zombies around with clickers around and the spores themselves. Some of the most beautiful moments happen in very low light environments like that. <laughs> and I'm really worried that they're just gonna scrap them off completely and kind of take away a bit of the danger of the universe itself because the spores is a huge part of the danger that goes with it but maybe like they felt like it would become too much of a video game scene meaning that it would become a recreation of exactly what it feels like to go through the video game so they wanted to do something different so what I've read it's apparently they want to replace all the spores with tendrils they form like a unified interconnected net so this means that if they touch those like fungi tendrils they're gonna receive like the disease itself like they're gonna catch the disease I don't really know how it works because we don't really see it happening in the first episode but we do get one great moment of special effects with something that kind of reminds me of Annihilation as well where we got like a man decomposing and becoming like part of the fungi part of the wall as well and even though they seem shocked to see it just because it's not meant to be there as Tess says herself they don't seem to be worried about spores they 
just don't seem to be worried about infection and that kind of worries me a little bit but just a little bit maybe they're gonna do something interesting with the tendrils and with the just threat of being infected I hope they do that but it's a very tiny change and maybe it doesn't even happen it's just a false rumor we'll have to see and of course we get to the end of the episode with a song by the Depeche Mode which of course came out in 87 and it's a song that is called the never let me down again and of course we know that it means danger I had to google it because I recognized the Depeche Mode but I wasn't sure whether this came out in the 80s or the 90s I knew it was an important like little hint about things to come but I really hope that we don't get to have one of those moments in every single episode at the end like we had for example for the series 1899 just because I really like the tone and the mood that Gustavo Santolella's music creates it's very nostalgic it's very sad and at the end of the day it's the last of us Bomba! Sensual. Oh, I really like the performances. Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey are incredibly good. I really like all the nuances and things that are going at the back of everyone's head, meaning that when you look at Pedro Pascal, you know that he's going through a lot of different feelings and a lot of different memories, and there is more to him than we can actually see with our own eyes. And I'm not even saying that as like someone who has played the video games and who loves the video games. It's just that the performances are so good and so committed. And I think this is gonna be a great series at the end of the day. So from now on, Last of Us is gonna come out on a weekly basis. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm not gonna be making like a, an overall review just because I think that this video is already enough. But let me know what you thought of the first episode down in the comments. Let me know what you thought of it as a fan of the video game itself. And let me know what you thought of it if you knew nothing about Last of Us, but you were still excited to see it, for example. It would be interesting to know what it looks like with fresh eyes. Does it just look like any other outbreak slash zombie apocalypse? show or does it feel different to you I would really like to know that don't forget to like and subscribe every single like that you drop will go to your favorite type of fungi slash mushroom because fungi is technically the ones that you don't eat right what is the difference between fungi and mushroom in the English language because there is no difference in Italian or French I'm rumbling yeah just give a like to your favorite mushroom whatever you like to eat porcinis portobello whatever the fuck just give a like for mushrooms they deserve a love because they're so scary, so dangerous, but so delicious as well. I'm Patrick, and this is Torn Apart. And it really feels like this is gonna be something special. And I, I will say, this will be the most authentic video game adaptation yet. You don't tell anyone about your condition. We try to keep you alive. You're not immune from being ripped apart.